welcome back to another video of mine. In today's video, this is going to be the start of hopefully a long running series about weathering. Now, in this series, I'll be covering not only locomotives and rolling stock weathering, but also building weathering and um, weathering on the layout. So, let's say rock faces, for example. So um, this is going to be episode one, and in this video, I'm going to be weathering this Steam Era Models VHJF Grain Hopper. So that's what we'll be weathering in today's video. So um, what I want to do is I want to show people how they can weather their products and do it simply and easily, and hopefully not spend too much money. So this video. We're going to be weathering this without an airbrush so that way those people who don't have an airbrush uh, have a few ways they can weather their rolling stock so yeah hopefully you like the sound of this series and um let's get into it shall we all right so this is everything here that i'll be using to weather this wagon at the back here so we've got vallejo weathering pigments this is burnt umber but it's more of a dark earth if I'm completely honest. We've got Tamiya XF68 NATO Brown. Now these brushes, I'm going to tell you a bit about these. These are made by Tamiya. And if you're just getting into weathering, get these. These are great. Uh, where I got them from, they're around $10. Uh, I think I paid a little bit less for my ones. But these will get you into weathering your models. So in the pack you get... Um, this brush here, which I use solely just for weathering powders. And then you get these two small brushes here, which are good for detailing. So yeah, that's pretty much all the stuff I'm going to be using to weather up this wagon. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before we even think about weathering the model, uh, we need to clean it first, so as you can see, I put some rubber gloves on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some paper towel and I'm just going to moisten it with some of this tap water here. Now you don't want to drench the paper towel and what we're going to do is we're just going to wipe over the model and clean off any dirt and grime that may be on it. Now, the reason why we do this is first off, our weathering sticks better. But two, when you handle your models, um, you leave finger oils on them. And what happens is, particularly when you apply weathering powders, the weathering powders will stick to the fingerprints and then you'll end up with a big fat fingerprint on the side of your model which obviously doesn't look good and then you know we get into areas like that of course don't forget these bits here Alright, that's all clean. So with that now clean, let's get on to the weathering. Okay, so we're now ready to weather our model. Now to weather this model, I'm just going to be using two different types of weathering techniques. Now these weathering techniques are really, really easy. And that's just simply dry brushing and weathering powders. So we start off with the dry brushing first. So I'm going to start off with the bogies. Uh, I may do a bit of streaking down the sides, but um, I'm going to mainly start off with the bogies. So, I'm going to crack open my tin of paint here. And then, 
I'm going to use this photo here because I forgot my. Oh, wait, never mind. Got a piece of um, paper towel here. Put that to the side. And then I'm going to use this brush here. Now, with dry brushing, you put a bit of paint on the brush. There we go. Hopefully, you can see that. And then just bring that into shot. You just wipe it off. So there's about maybe 90% dry the brush is. And then take your wagon and then just start brushing it up and down. You may need to put more on. I had no idea how the camera can pick that up, but trust me, that's made a big difference already. So yeah, those are now weathered, and I'll just quickly do the other side. So there we go, that's the bogies weathered. Now, I may do just a little bit on the under frame here. Now as you can see I've applied way too much, so what I can do, I then take a different brush, this one's completely clean and dry, and I simply just manipulate it around, and unfortunately that seems to have dried. Yep, that seems to have dried already. Oh well. That doesn't matter anyway, because the bottom bits here are normally pretty dirty on a grain car. Anyway, so yeah. That's why, once you put the paint on, take your dry brush. Start manipulating it like that. Oops. Oh, help me blend it in with the weathering powders.
Alright, so that's all the dry brushing finished for the underframe and for the entire model. So I'm going to put that to the side now because um, I may as well do the couplers. So what I'm going to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some clothes pegs and I'm just going to put the couplers in there like that. That way I'll have something to hold on to. And I'm just going to get my brush, dip it in my paint. And I'm just going to paint the couplers basically. This gives them a nice realistic weathered look. There we go, so that's one done. Let's quickly do the other. Okay, second one done. So uh, let those dry and then we'll reinstall them on the model. Okay, so the next thing is of course weathering powders. So dry brushing is now nice and dry. So we can now start with the weathering powders. Now I did now I did one of these earlier today, so here's what was left over. And uh, whenever you do your weathering powder work, do it on a piece of paper. That way, what you can do afterwards, you can then sort of fold it up and then put it all in the middle and then put it back in the container if that makes any sense. You'll see me doing it anyway, so yeah. Open this up. And then, we're going to take this brush, this brush, as I said, this is the one I use for solely just for weathering powders. And then going to dip a bit in there and now I'm going to apply it to the wagon. Now I'm going to work on one half at the moment. Just sort of move it around, manipulate it. And that already has actually made a big difference. Uh, no idea how well the camera can pick this up, but oh yeah, it's doing it all right. Yeah, you can see it's made a big difference already. Do the same on this end here. And yeah, that's already made a big difference, so with the powder that's left on the paper here, yeah, put some of that into a pile and reuse it.
and the light just went out. Got to charge that light. So yeah, there we go. That's now made a bit of a difference. So I'm going to keep working away at that and I'll do the other side as well. And uh, I'll put you back on when it's done. Okay, so that's both sides done. Now of course, don't forget to do the ends. As you know, the ends get quite dirty as well. But they don't get as dirty as the sides. Yeah, you can kind of see that now. Okay, so that's the ends done. So now, I just need to do the roof. Alright, I think that's pretty good. Just tip off the excess. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty happy with how that turned out. It's a nice light weathering. Don't want it to be too heavy. So, uh, let's take it outside and give it a bit of matte varnish. Alright, so I'm going to do this as quick as I can. And we're spraying outside because, you know, we don't want to be breathing in this stuff. So, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this as quick as as quickly as I possibly can before it gets too dark. Okay, so it's now time for cleanup. So what I was talking about earlier with the weathering powders, I put the paper into a U shape like that, and now it's all gone into the middle. Then we can take our weathering powder container. Sorry about the light level. And then we just pour it in there like that. 
Therefore, we save weathering powders and we don't waste any. So, it's kind of economical if you ask me. Okay, so this is now drying and as you saw, uh, I map varnished it with this. Now this is unfortunately finished now, so this can of matte varnish is finished. So I've got to um, buy a new one. Um, I literally only just had enough to finish sealing in all the weathering on this. So uh, yeah, I'm going to let this dry. And good thing now, all the couplings are dry. So uh, once this is dry, let's put the couplings back on. Okay, so whilst we're waiting for the matte varnish to dry, I'm just going to show you some of the other ones I've done. Now, I did this one yesterday, and this was done using a mixture of dry brushing and weathering powders and washes. And this has gone for, a, I would say, a medium weathering effect. And then this one I did today for doing this video. And this one is quite heavy, lots of streaking, and this was done using the same methods same weathering methods as this one so washes, weathering powders and dry brushing so uh, yeah those are the other ones I've done and they turned out pretty good okay there we go um, there's the model now dry and I put the couplings back on and then here it is next to the other two Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out So uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll put it on the track couple it up to my tea class and uh, We'll have a little running session So, there we are. That will be it for today's video. So, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And um, I look forward to seeing you in episode 2 of my weathering series. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone.